tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Hope you had a great weekend. Ready to go in this brand new week before we get into Labor Day weekend. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. It is August 31st. Monday morning and now it's 6.30. A car drives right into a Lexington building, a business there. It has left a mess for the store owners to clean up. A man ended up in the hospital after shots were fired through his front door. And a mother in jail this morning after police say she was passed out behind the wheel of her truck with her kids in the vehicle. Pretty calm, pretty quiet outside right now. We're not really seeing much outside at this very moment. However, look back toward the south and the east. That's where we're seeing that boundary still located over there. When it moves our direction, what is it going to bring us? Rain or just a little moisture? We'll get into that forecast coming up. All right, a lot going on this morning, and there's a lot of cleaning up to do right now after a car crashed right into a store. A police and firefighters were called to the Rite Aid on West Loudon around 3 this morning for a report of a car into a building. When they arrived, they found the car actually hit a light pole as a per and a person as well. WKYT's Mark Barber is live outside the store with more on how police think this all went down. Good morning, Rebecca. Police say that the car crashed into a man sitting outside the building, and then the car punched a hole in the drugstore here, tearing down the insulation, the drywall, even the shelving. You can see that a large gaping hole is still here in the side of the building. Crews still working to clean up this mess this morning. They say that the car actually went into the building, the hood of it is, that is, and the car did not come to a stop until the windshield came to a rest against the side of this drugstore here. We're told that this happened around 3 a.m. at this Rite Aid at the intersection of Loudoun and North Broadway. Police said that the car hit a utility pole and then crashed into a man who was sitting nearby, careening into a drugstore. The bystander was taken to the hospital, but he did not appear to be seriously hurt. Police tell us that the man who owns the car says he let a woman that he just met at a party drive his car. Officers say they are still trying to find her because she took off after wrecking the vehicle. The man who was in the car with her was not seriously hurt. But the building, it's going to need some major patchwork. We need to uh, evaluate the wall a little bit further once we are able to get into the building. But right now, it doesn't appear that the building is in uh, any serious danger of further structural issues. Now, store employees are inside this Rite Aid this morning trying to figure out if the building is okay to open up this morning. So far, there's no word on that. Now, several police officers are in the parking lot here this morning making sure that thieves. Don't take advantage of the easy access into this drugstore. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Oh, all right, Mark, thank you very much. And police are looking for a woman who they say shot through a door, injuring a man inside overnight. The details are new this morning here on WKYT. The shooting happened on Village Drive very early this morning. Police say a man and two women were arguing about 12.45 this morning when one of the women shot right through the door. One of those bullets hit the man in the kneecap. Police say his injuries are not serious. Officers are still looking for both women. New this morning, police say they found a mother passed out in a truck under the influence with her kids inside. They found the woman on Maywick Drive around 1.15 in the morning. Her 11-month-old and 21-month-old were not hurt. At this point, police tell us they are not sure if the woman was under the influence of alcohol or drugs or both, but she is being charged with DUI and wanton endangerment. They took the mother to the hospital. The kids are with their grandmother. The time this morning is 6.34 here on WKYT, and it is a case that is being followed around the nation. A Kentucky County Court clerk refusing to issue marriage licenses in the wake of a ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court legalizing gay marriage. A federal judge handed down a ruling giving Kim Davis a deadline to begin issuing licenses. That deadline is today. WKYT's Hillary Thornton has been tracking this case for days now and is joining us from the live desk with more on what's expected to happen today in Rowan County. Good morning, Rebecca and Bill. Today is the day a temporary stay issued by U.S. District Court Judge David Bunning is scheduled to expire. That comes as a, a transgender man and his wife claim Davis issued them a marriage license back in February. The couple was at a rally outside of the Rowan County Courthouse on Saturday where they made their story public. The clerk's office was scheduled to be open at the time but ended up closing. Cameron Cullen, who is a transgender man, and his wife Alexis say Davis's office provided the license February 26th without asking for Cameron's birth certificate. The birth certificate does identify Cameron as female. The family says they had some hesitation about coming forward with their claim. 
She can fight it all you want, but as long as she fights it, we're going to be right there beside her fighting it the rest of the way. We want to make sure that you guys and everybody out there knows that this isn't for us. We have our marriage mm -hmm. and we have our daughter. That's for us. But this, what we're doing is for our community and everybody who cannot get married somewhere out there. Now, as for that temporary stay issued by Judge Bunning, the ruling was already made last week with the judge ordering Davis to start issuing licenses. However, her attorneys say the stay remains in place until the 31st, which is today. Now, we have not been able to receive clarification as to if that means it actually ends today or if it lasts through today, expiring at midnight. We do plan to be at the clerk's office when it is scheduled to open this morning. We will keep you updated on what happens there throughout the day. At the live desk, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Well, a man charged in a deadly uh, biking accident is due in court today. Police say Marciano Pozos was riding his bike down at Newtown Pike Friday when Jess Greathouse hit him with his pickup. Pozos later died from his injuries. Police say Greathouse first left the scene but was caught not too long after. He's charged now with manslaughter, leaving the scene of an accident and driving under the influence. Investigators say Pozas was riding with the flow of traffic. They're still not sure exactly how he was hit. A Pulaski County man was arrested following a standoff with police over the weekend. According to the Commonwealth Journal, Somerset police were responding to a call about a chemical spill when they found 37 year old Herbert Duggar Jr. barricaded in an apartment. He was wanted for violating the conditions of his parole. Police say they negotiated with him for a couple of hours until he finally surrendered peacefully. A stretch of I 75 in Cincinnati is back open this morning after an overnight shootout. Our sister station in Cincinnati. Cincinnati reporting at least three people were shot after a fight broke out at a nearby gas station. It then spilled out onto the interstate. We're told the victims were rushed to a hospital there in the Queen City. We are not sure of the extent of their injuries. The northbound lanes of I-75 surrounding the station were closed for about two hours. The interstate has since reopened. Well, a review of federal education data shows more than 30,000 students in Kentucky are homeless. The Lexington Herald Leader says its analysis shows Kentucky has the nation's highest rate of student homelessness. They add that the number has nearly doubled in less than six years. That's a scary statistic right there. A uh, big number for you. I mean, it really 30, is. 30,000. Yeah, and uh, again, uh, the worst uh, situation in the country in, the, in that uh, measure. Yeah. yeah. Well, Kentucky Education Commissioner Terry Holliday is retiring today. He's packed up, ready to go. Over the weekend, the state education board said they have narrowed their search for his replacement down to two people. The board met with five candidates last week. They have not said which two of those have been picked. But they have ordered an in depth background check on each of them. And when those results come in, the board will have a special meeting to take the next step. Kevin Brown will serve as the interim commissioner until the board hires a new one. Let's check to see how traffic is moving on this Monday morning. Not hearing of too many issues. Time this morning is 6 38, and here's a look at live drive traffic. If we'll uh, check what's going on right now, the Waze app, maybe, or a camera, we'll uh, look outside, see what's going on, or we'll stay right here and tell you that you know we only what? have uh, th really the issue that uh, we're watching carefully is over there on uh, Loudoun Avenue where, at the Rite Aid uh, where they had that situation that uh, they're still working on uh, this morning to try to clear that up. Uh, that uh, being that uh, a vehicle ran into the Rite Aid store. All right, now there we go with a look outside, and things are moving along just fine at uh, Broadway and High this morning. Uh, no other reports of any trouble. More news coming up Monday morning on WKYT. A California man turned quite the magic trick. He turned $20 into a whole lot more. We'll tell you all about this man's incredible lottery payout after weather. It is the last day of August. We are heading into September the next several days. But you know what? Summer doesn't want to go anywhere anytime soon. I'll show you those rain chances and also that heat and humidity coming up.